schedule a free design consultation and the more you buy, the more you'll save on blinds, shades, shutters, and more from Budget Blinds. Visit BudgetBlinds.com today. Well, the Civic Center was packed and rowdy for Game 5 between the AJHL rivals, the Lloydminster Bobcats and the Bonneville Pontiacs. Bobcats looking for their first win of the series in their own barn, while the Pontiacs had a chance to finish the series once and for all. First period, Jacob Lapointe. He fires it from the blue line, gets Troy Trombley's pads, and in the ensuing flurry, it's Taylor Lutoski who nets it. Cats get their claws out first. Now, with two minutes left in the period, Bonneville responds in a big way. This might be the goal of the year in the AJ. Fritz tries to cross, it scores! He takes a page out of Sydney Crosby. Wow, when do you ever see that? What a showstopper. Dying seconds of the first. Now Taylor Allen, he gets a breakaway. But Trombley fashes the leather, one of his 12 saves of the first period. Cats get a man advantage. Patrick Geary gets a stick on the shot from Alex Hernitsky to pull the home team ahead. Then in the axe end, Ryan Black tries to clear it. But Troy Van Teetering gets the rebound and nets it, his second of the playoffs, and what a time to do it. Now in the dying seconds of the frame, and Cody Fiala with a swing and a miss. Evan Schumi smacks it home on the pass from Kevin Dara as the Bobcats push the series to game six and head to Bonneville. Bobcats take it by a final of 5-2. Devin Green stood tall in net, turning away 34 shots. As for Troy Trombley, he made 21 saves on the night. Now the felines turn their attention to Bonneville and another must-win situation for game six this Sunday. We head to the Civic for some post-game reaction. I thought our guys competed a lot harder than we had. I mean, the game was closer than uh, certainly what I thought it was. Uh, Goaltending was a big difference tonight. Uh, Devin made some big saves and gave us a chance. And, you know, I thought we got some pucks in traffic the net when we were successful on their goalie. But, uh, uh, you know, in uh, the defensive zone, neutral zone, and, and offensive zone, I thought it was a fairly evenly matched game. Something you could do with the Bobcats just does well with a do or die situation. So I think we kind of rallied behind that. and. Everyone was pumped up. There wasn't too much chatter in the locker room before, and so everyone knew what kind of they had to do. Just for, I guess, pride ourselves, we don't want Bonneville to walk in here and sweep us in our own, uh, in our own building for the series. So I think we, we owed it to ourselves, everybody, the fans, everybody, just to kind of play our best and get a win, just because, again, pride was kind of the biggest thing there. Now, if you can remember way back to late December and early January, the Bonneville Pontiacs weren't always looking this poised to make or even perform in the playoffs. But it's amazing what a few trades and some team chemistry can do for a club. It's hard to believe that since January 16th, the Bonneville Pontiacs have only lost two games in regulation, and they've both come at the hands of the Lloyd Minster Bobcats in playoffs. Not very many teams in the AJ thought we were going to make it this far, but we kind of just got everybody to believe and started going along, and now everybody in the room believes. It's a, it's a pretty big thing. We've heard and read what other teams have said, and we just take that and use that as fuel. Much of that recent success is due to clutch trades at the deadline. Evan Warmington, a 20-year-old forward, had seven points in 18 games with the White Court Wolverines, but has racked up an impressive point-per-game average with the Pontiacs. It's always a little difficult game trade at first, but you, but these guys came open up with open arms and they've just welcomed us. I just think I've, I've been given like a bigger opportunity here. Uh, just like I don't know, Rick's, Rick's put a lot of trust in me, and it's been, been paid off. So. I think we came together at the perfect time, right right after the deadline there, and everyone was uh, everyone was on the same page. The guys kind of seemed like every we had all the pieces. We just had to use them and when we started winning games against bigger teams. The trades also took some of the pressure off Dylan McCombie and Kyler Hain. But for each of the 20-year-olds, the sense of urgency in the playoffs is imminent, and this will be their last chance at a title. Oh, I'm just leaving everything out on the ice. You know, um, anything I can do to help the team, blocking shots. I, I know I'm a 20-year-old. I'm done after this year. I definitely do not want to be done, so I want to I play this out as far as I can. For some reason, the league likes to, a lot of the other teams in the league like to see us as underdogs, but uh, we don't feel like we're underdogs to ourselves. Like, we believe, believe in our dressing room that we're a good team, and that's all that really needs to do, believe it. And to the minor midget provincials, the Lloydminster Rohan Rage were in the semifinals earlier today, facing the NWCAA Stampeders. 
And the Stampeders move on to the gold medal game and blank the Rage with a 1-0 victories. The Stampeders outshot the Lloydminster Rowan Rage 36-29. The Rage now play in the Provincial Bronze Medal game tomorrow against the CRAA Blue at 11.45. It was the regional championships for the Saskatchewan High School Basketball League in Lashburn this afternoon. And a juicy prize on the line. A spot in the coveted Hoopla Tournament in Saskatoon next weekend. The home team, the Lashburn Lobos, taking on the Kenora Cougars. Cougars already leading 54-41 at the half. Then Blaine Hammerstone sinks the baby J for another two. Lobos start pushing the comeback. Money pass to Cole Cleghorn. He goes up for an easy two. Now in Cougar zone, and Brendan Sauer, he gets in there, creates a turnover. Look at those wheels. And on the shot, pulls a foul. Now he missed the first, but sinks the second. Now only down by 10, and Sauer, he gets another steal. This time, he finds Zachary Tucker, who's wide open. He goes up for the deuce, and Cougars call a timeout as the score is 56-48 going into the last quarter. But this is when the Cougars shift a gear. Kyle Strelioff gets the rebound and goes up for two. Then Scott pop off. He pops one off as the Cougars pull away and eventually take it by a final of 87-64. They will head to Saskatoon next weekend for the Hoopla Tournament.